Hey to all of you moms out there, I'm Hina Sheth at Rebalance Physical Therapy and Wellness and today I want to talk to all of you moms out there that are either planning on having a c-section, have already recently had a c-section, or maybe it's been weeks, months, or maybe even a year or two since you've had your c-section, but that you've started to notice or maybe already noticed after your, you had your c-section that you're starting to have like complications and problems after a c-section and no one really taught you how to adequately rehab and so maybe this is kind of what you've been told like after your six-week appointment and your checkup when you probably had a ton of questions on what to do after your c-section maybe you're like eh, so that's it like I just kind of figure out how to heal and and take care of myself and you know C-section's no joke. I mean, you're talking about several layers of tissues. There's actually seven, but three major layers that they have to cut through to get your child into this beautiful world. And so, you know, what happens to your body, it almost seems like everyone cares about you during pregnancy, and then you have the baby, and everyone's like, okay, we're, we're, concerned, we're more concerned about the baby and making sure the baby's healthy. But what about, what about you? Like, is anyone going to kind of help you through this process of healing and recovery and make sure things that everything kind of moves in the right direction and moves in the proper sequence? And so, you know, I kind of say, I'm like, does your body bounce back just like it was before a C-section? Um, and I would say before any pregnancy, you know, after having any type of a child and really, no, it doesn't. What I usually tell people is that, you know, here you are, everything's like wonderful and, you know, before pregnancy, and then you have a baby and it's like, whoa, my body just got, just, you know, just got turned upside down. And then, oops, I'm going to go back. And then you recover, but it feels like you don't fully recover. And then perhaps you have another child, okay? And then, whoa, you get hit again. And then it seems like I recovered, but I'm not even quite back to where I was before. And, you know, how do I know this? I'm going to change my camera here. How do I know, um, you know, that this is what happens? Well, I'll tell you. Number one, you know, I've been a pelvic floor physical therapist as well as an orthopedic certified physical therapist for 21 years. I've been working with so many pregnancy and postpartum women um, that I ever thought that I would. Um, my staff is included in all of this. There's four of us in our staff. And all of us have been treating women for years and years and years with lots of complex issues. And we see the problems that come out outside of C-section. Not everyone has problems after a C-section, but m many do end up having long-term issues that sometimes you don't even realize is related to a C-section. So basically, I've had now 21 years of experience um, you know, I worked in New York City as a pelvic floor, as a orthopedic therapist, and then I gradually worked my way into working on pelvic floor patients right here at UPenn Hospital. And I participated in research studies that involved pelvic floor dysfunction. I was a test writer for the pelvic floor specialty exam. And then in 2008, I actually founded Rebalance Physical Therapy and Wellness, where now we treat women one on one to really get them up and going. Um, after you know any sort of injury and problems that they've had, especially pertaining around the spine, hip, and the pelvis. And of course, um, I have continued to lecture in all of the major hospital systems um, on uh, peri and postpartum care and how is the most effective way to get people and women back to where they want to be. And so I teach at almost all the major hospital systems right here. And I also continue to treat. But aside from all of those things, what I can say is the most important thing is that I've had two vaginal deliveries, I've had one C-section, and I have three amazing kids. But man, can I tell you, with, after each one of my deliveries, I had my own set of problems. Everything from, you know, uh, prolapses, tears, uh, my own weaknesses, and rehabbing myself with my third child. My third one was the C-section. And man, it was some type of recovery and this so basically the way that I have structured how someone gets better is a combination of my own clinical experience but also my own journey 
in having a C-section and that being my third child and man, recovery was a tough one, even myself being an orthopedic and pelvic floor therapist. And so this is also based on my own journey. And you can see right here, this is a picture of myself. Really, uh, you can see my facial expression. I am, I am not really happy because here I am, you know, I bounced back after my first child relatively well. Um, you know, I had my own vaginal problems. Um, but, but in terms of my abdomen, I, I was fine. I didn't think I had a big problem. And I had my second child and I noticed, you know, it's not quite the same, but it's totally fine. And then, man, my third one, here's me a couple of months after having a baby. And when this went flat, I was still feeling like I was pregnant. I was like, what is going on? And so I, you know, I asked my GYN, I'm like, what is going on with me? Like, is this my C-section scar? Is it, you know, is it fat? Is it this? Is it that? And he couldn't really answer me. He's like, your scar looks great and you're fine and you're doing well and just, you know, continue to take it easy and, you know, gradually get your way back into exercise. I'm like, wow, is this the information that all women are being told? And here is my own GYN who knows that I'm a pelvic floor therapist, not being able to give me any more advice. And it's not necessarily their fault. I mean, this is what I feel like most physicians in their head what's going on when they're asked questions regarding recovery from their C-section. I mean, unless they're having, you know, complications that are related to the actual surgery in terms of like infection or the wound not closing or something like that. If there's any other questions that are related to recovery after a C-section, scar, pain, any of that sort of stuff, like orthopedic type pain, they're kind of like, well, you know, this is normal. How many times have you heard, you know, this is normal. You just had a baby. You had a major surgery. You got to take it easy. But you're like, okay, I've been taking it easy. And what do I do? So, um, you know, common questions that I'm sure some of these I had even after a C-section that I'm sure you guys are having is, do I work on my scars? How do I work on my scar even if I'm supposed to? Should I be binding myself? If so, how long? Should I bind myself for weeks, for months, for an entire year? Um, when is it okay for me to start exercising? How much exercise should I do? Uh, how should I do my exercises? Is, am I doing them right? Could I be making things worse if I do a certain exercise? What if I do too much? How do I know I've done too much? What can I do to relieve some of the constipation that I'm feeling? Is it normal to still be constipated months after having a C-section? Um, what in general is just too much? Is it normal to still have pain? And when should I start feeling like myself again? When should I be concerned and what I should watch out for? Why am I having back and hip issues still? Why is sex still painful? Is my core weak? Is it normal to have a prolapse? Okay, some of you guys don't even know what a prolapse is. Some of you guys do. Is it normal to have a prolapse after a C-section? Is it normal to have urinary incontinence after a C-section? Because I didn't have a vaginal delivery. Or maybe you had a vaginal delivery before, and now it's not until after your C-section that you're actually starting to have bladder issues. So these are the questions that I know that are very common that my own patients have asked their GYN, and they kind of get the... Ah, either that or some generalized uh, answer to their question. And again, can't fault your GYN. Your GYN is there to make sure you are alive and safe and um, that your baby is alive and safe and healthy. And that's what they go to school for. But all these other things that involve your muscles, your tendons, your ligaments, your healing, all of that kind of stuff is basically the realm of... Um, our territory, which is physical therapy. So common problems that we see here at our clinic after C-sections is everything from constipation, scar issues and sensitivities. You know, I've had people tell me that even putting a bed sheet around their scar or wearing even like loose underwear, when it rubs up against their scar, it's super sensitive. Um, stress urinary incontinence, urinary urgency, um, Dysperionia is a medical term, but it basically means painful intercourse, um, low back pain, sacroiliac joint pain, which is the pain that is located. Now, this is a, I'm going to show you a pelvic model. Here's your spine, but this area right here, this is called your sacrum, and this is your sacroiliac joint. So pain there, maybe even tailbone pain, um, core weakness. So a lot of weakness associated after a C-section for some people. They feel like they're just unbalanced, and they don't feel like their posture as well. Abdominal pain. 
again, bladder urgency, frequency, feeling like they have to go to the bathroom all the time, prolapses, which is um, a descending of some of the organs like your bladder um, as well as your rectum, uh, pushing down into the vaginal and or rectal opening, um, diastasis recti, some of you may or may not be familiar with that term, but it's basically where the abdominals split and you still feel like you're pregnant, um, even months after having the baby. Um, and then of course that mom pooch, like what, what's going on with that mom pooch? Okay. I know some of you guys, I was really angry about my mom pooch and I was just angry in general that I wasn't recovering as well as I should have been. And that's why my face looked the way that it was in that picture. So these are some of the common problems that people have after a C-section. But I've, I've heard so many other issues on top of these things. So I kind of want to tell you about scar tissue. So, you know, you can have C-section scar. This is the most common. But sometimes there have been C-sections that I've seen that look like this. But scar tissue can be a major, major issue after having a C-section. And what can happen is that C-section scar, it can actually, over time, as it becomes hardened and healed over time, it can actually start creating pulling, kind of like saran wrap. Um, it pulls. And so even though you're pulling on the saran wrap at this corner, it actually has an effect on all other areas of where that saran wrap is. And it's, so it's the same idea that you have a scar here. And even though your scar is here, it could be pulling into things way up into your rib cage, into the upper abdomen, into the hip and the thighs, into the back. It can actually be also pulling into the shoulder. I have had women that come in with abdominal scars where it's affecting their shoulder. Okay. And so this seems like a complicated picture right here, but I want to show you that you know, if you look at the side profile, this is a side profile, kind of a skeleton model. This particular picture is um, uh, uh, it's from a wonderful uh, physical therapist in Canada. Her name is Diane Lee. This is from her fifth pelvic floor edition of the pelvic girdle. So I want to give her credit because she's an amazing clinician. Um, she, this is her kind of depiction of the side profile of what's called the abdominal canister. Okay, so if you think of this as your trunk, okay, this is your diaphragm, which is a muscle that you breathe out of. It's actually located, I'm going to show you on me, it's located right underneath this rib cage. And it's the muscle that when you breathe, it goes up and down. Okay, that's the muscle that's responsible for breathing. Then you've got these muscles in the front, which is your abdominals, right in through here. This specific one that's um, shown is called the transversus abdominis. It's the deepest layer of your abdominal muscles. These are your pelvic floor muscles. Some of you guys have heard of these muscles. They're the muscles that actually help function, a functioning of urination, uh, defecation, which is having a bowel movement, as well as sexual function. And then you've got your back muscles right in through here. These four muscles, if you can um, kind of imagine that they form like a balloon, a closed system, you can see that if you, um, you know, basically disturb that balloon, in any place, whether it's the back, the front, the top, in any of these muscles, it just like a balloon, if you press on it and squeeze it in any areas, it's gonna affect the other areas of this musculature. So imagine now here you have this C-section where you had this cut, a deep cut by the way, okay? Again, C-section is a major abdominal surgery. So when you have this cut right over here, it can actually affect the abdominals, it can affect the pelvic floor, it can affect these back muscles, and it can even affect your breathing, okay? Because this C-section alone can cause scarring and tightening, and along with all the other things that happen during pregnancy, postural changes, other tightnesses that develop, that can just be just icing on the cake when it comes to other aches and pains and problems that you can develop over time. And so, what you can see, I'm going to go back again, right behind here, and I'm going to show you a model, okay? So this is my little, my pelvic model, okay? You can see here that that C-section scar happens right in through this area, okay? And they have to get to the uterus, which is back here. But guess what's right in front of that uterus? It's the bladder. So when they're doing an incision where they're cutting in through here, they move things out of the way to get to the uterus. But sometimes that scar tissue can actually have an effect on the bladder. It can have an effect on other organs around here, as well as, there's your rectum. Sorry, I kind of slid over. But that this is the rectum. 
where you defecate and have a bowel movement, okay? And then you've got your large and small intestines that sit on top. So that scar tissue, you can see, sorry, I keep jumping around there, can cause some irritation of the bladder. And that can cause frequency and urgency, feeling like you have to go to the bathroom all the time. Not only that, but it can cause that scar in and of itself can cause abdominal pain and sensitivity. And then you can see here, okay, this is a picture of myself, okay, a couple of months after having a baby, I'm still seeing this Oh, just cosmetically abdominal belly that just is not me. This is not what my abdomen looked like before a C-section. So I call that the mom pooch. The mom pooch can look very different in different people. But this was my mom pooch. You can see my umbilicus is kind of sticking out. My belly button is inside out. Okay. I have like just swelling and fullness. What it looks like, it still looks like I'm pregnant. And just, um, you know, just really... Um, frustrating because that is not what my my body looked like before and so figuring all that out now not only that but posturally things change after well before while you're you know in peripartum while you're kind of having the baby you start to develop this type of posturing okay but after a c-section because of that scarring and tightening and just guarding because you're in pain you develop a lot of postural changes and so here is a picture of that, that picture of me again, where I show, you know, ideally, if you drop a red line from the crown of your head down to the midline through the foot, what it should look like, and we're going to look at this model over here, if I drop this line, you'll see that there's a nice line that goes from the ear down through the shoulder, down through the elbow into this bone, which is called your trochanter, the hip bone, down through the midline kind of area of the knee and down through the ankle. This is what it should look like in a balanced body. But with pregnancy and even postpartum, you can see here that mine goes through the crown of the head and into the ear and through the shoulder, but then it starts to change. See, the, cre the, my, the line is in front of my elbow. It's in front of a little bit in front of my hip joint. It's definitely having more effect on my knee when this line should be around here. And then when you really get down through the ankle, it should be going through here, but it goes through the front of my foot. So this can create a lot of the issues, low back issues, hip issues, plantar fascia or foot pain issues, and it's not uncommon after pregnancy to start developing these things um, that are happening. And something called a diastasis recti, which again can be related to the mom pooch. Sometimes people can have a separation of the abdominal muscles, and sometimes this is what you see. You see this separation of what's called the rectus abdominis muscles. And now this is a picture of a toned belly so I could show you what that actual separation looks like. But for many, if you have, um, you know, still adipose and, and all that kind of stuff that's sitting on top, this is gonna look like you're still pregnant because you don't have that connection um, there any longer. It actually has opened up. So these things can happen. It doesn't always happen after a C-section, but it can happen. And this is actually what happened to me. And it was a long journey for me to figure out how to correctly, appropriately uh, move myself forward to really improve my core. Because many people, when they start developing this diastasis, which happens during pregnancy, but it should close after pregnancy for many women, this does not happen. And they start to develop core weakness, which can affect their back, their hip, and give them lots of discomfort and pain in their pelvis, in the back, tailbone. It can cause pelvic floor muscle spasms, which can cause pain. It can cause abdominal pain, it can cause hip pain, knee pain, and foot pain. Okay, and then on top of that, what about sex? For some, You'd think, hey, I had a C-section. This shouldn't affect the muscles of my pelvic floor, which is right here, right? Because everything happened here. Nothing happened here. I didn't have a vaginal delivery. But believe it or not, many women, after they have a C-section, complain about having discomfort with intercourse. And that can come from many different reasons. Um, but what it does feel like is it feels like your husband, when you go to have intercourse, his penis feels like a cactus. And... Um, I know you guys, those of you who are having this problem can relate to that. And so yes, after a C-section, you can have pain with intercourse, okay? So, 
frustrating, right? All of these things that you might be dealing with, all of this is so frustrating. And guess what? This is where many healthcare practitioners don't have the answer to what's going on. Again, not necessarily their fault, but this is where we are the specialists that are educated in this and know how to help and what is going on. So frustrating again, so we're gonna, we're gonna take care of that. So the impact of scar tissue. Again, we talked about this. You can end up having bladder frequency urgency pain. You can have gastrointestinal issues like constipation, scar sensitivity, pelvic pain, and down the line, you some people, we've seen this, can have infertility um, because of that scar tissue. So it's so important to get that managed. And, and again, um, you know, the impact of scar tissue uh, on the, the second pregnancy potentially can also affect that as well. And so I wanted to show this picture to you, again, just to show you kind of like that saran wrap feeling that if you have scarring, you know, and that's going to happen usually right here. If you have scarring, it's kind of like a tight shirt pulling. It can affect the rest of the area of the body. And that's what can happen with scar tissue. And then again, as I mentioned, yes, pelvic floor issues after a C-section. And I, the reason why I put this here is because I wanted you to see what that pelvic floor part of it, the, it doesn't depict this whole picture, doesn't depict the whole pelvic floor, but you can see in this pelvic floor that it attaches to the tailbone, it attaches to the pubic bone, and it attaches to the hip muscles. So when this guy becomes problematic, it can affect the entire region around that pelvis and the hip. And so going back to this picture, I say kind of like um, the song, you know, tin roof disrupted. Well, this is what I was feeling. Your core disrupted, because this is what happened to me. And I was frustrated and I wanted to get this better. So we need to get these areas functioning properly and get them recovered after a C-section, because we want to avoid short as well as long-term issues that become problematic in this abdominal canister, which is so important to the rest of your body. And that's what we're going to talk about next. If this abdominal canister right in through here is not appropriately balanced, and this is what we here at our clinic look at when uh, 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 someone comes in after having a baby. We look at all of these muscles and if they're balanced and if they're functioning well. If they're not, we start to get them rehab. Because if you don't, all the other muscles that attach in and around this abdominal canister, I know some of you guys are hearing my dog bark in the background, um, but if all of these, if that abdominal canister is not balanced, then all of the other muscles that attach in and around these, um, this, these trunk muscles, okay, this right here, these muscles right here are called your hip flexor muscles. They're called your psoas muscles. These muscles right here are your gluteal muscles. Here are your hamstrings. And in the front, here's your abdominal muscles. And here are your inner thigh muscles. And your, the quad muscles aren't shown here, but there's your knees. All of these muscles, okay, will start to become problematic as well. And they might start to compensate and become problematic and tight. And that's where you start developing the hip issues and the back issues and the weaknesses and the, you know, the foot issues and those types of things. So it, the core is really, really important. And I can tell you many of the women that end up having orthopedic issues, whether it's, you know, hip replacement, knee replacements, knee arthritis, any of these things, they, most of them can trace it back to my problem started actually after I had my babies, okay? So you're forming this tug of war in the body where certain muscles are becoming tight, certain muscles are becoming weak, and so you've got this tug of war and then in this imbalance that happens in the body. And for a period of time, some of you might be able to handle it because perhaps you're young enough where your body can recover. But once you start getting either a little bit older or you start developing all these other compensations on top, then you're going to lose that tug of war and pain is going to start settling in or restrictions or tightness or some other thing like that. And so this is where you may develop, like I said, hip issues, back issues, upper back issues, neck issues, all those sorts of things. And not only that, after a C-section, many people also can develop different types of hernias. An umbilical hernia is not uncommon. This is what I had. This is the inside out belly button that I ended up developing. Okay, and other hernias can also potentially 
be in the mix, especially if that core becomes weakened, or if you start doing too much too soon after a C-section. But again, nobody tells you how much you should do and how much is too little or too much. And this is the frustration in the world today. Um, and actually, you know, the world in the past too, there was no and there is no appropriate guidance um, after a C-section and how to recover from it. So again, problems down the line that we end up seeing along with all the other things that I said are all of these things that we've already talked about. So how do you even do exercises right? right? Are crunches okay? How do I get my core back to being good again? These are the things that a lot of my women ask me. And so finally, what we did is we created a program that holds your hand through the recovery of a C-section and we help to guide you. And I developed this out of my own frustrations with recovering after my C-section myself. And why our program? Well, obviously I told you about my background, but all of it is based on advanced holistic and comprehensive training. We have four physical therapists that have helped to develop this program that all have anywhere between 18 to 23 years of experience. And most of us are moms that have had vaginal deliveries and C-section. So it's our own personal experience that also has helped us put this program together. 21, I can say 21 years of clinical experience. If you put all of our clinical experience together, it's close to 80. Our experience in helping 99% of our clients improve, we see hundreds of patients every year. Um, and at this point, we've probably treated thousands of clients together. This program is intended to support what we do with our own clients. So what we have in this video is some of the things that we do with our own clients right in our clinic. Most up-to-date evidence-based program based on a lot of the research that is out there. And Hina's personal experience, so which is mine, my own personal experience after having three children. And on top of that, we have the support of telehealth case management as well as email support to really help guide you through this program. So it's not that like you're left alone to do this. We're interactive with you. What's in the program? Well, we exactly go from day one, okay, after having a C-section, all the way 12 weeks after to help you go all the way to 12 weeks after having a C-section. And how to effectively work on your scar, postural education on everything from sit to stand and lift without hurting yourself right after you have your baby, specific muscles to release, stretch, which tend to improve and uh, that tend to improve your pain, but it's, you know, it, all of these tight muscles is what is probably contributing to your pain and how to get your core functioning. How, which, when, and why, which exercises you should do, why you should be doing those exercises and how to get your core functioning again. And then at the end, we have a 20 minute stretch and a 30 minute exercise program to help you go through this uh, right away. Okay, after you've been healed and ready to go. And we're gonna guide you through this. And there's much, much more that I can't even talk about in one little slide. Um, lots of educational material, everything from binding to splinting, um, why you should splint, is it appropriate to bind? All of that type of stuff we're gonna be talking about. And like I said, it's a 12 week program that it's, it's intended, intended to guide you up until 12 weeks of rehabilitation. And for those of you who are past the 12 week program, it's still the same thing that you're going to be doing. Some parts of it you might be able to skip because you're, at, you know, you're, you're already healed after your C-section in terms of the scar. But for many of you who have not had the, had the appropriate rehabilitation after a C-section and you're noticing a lot of your problems started after a C-section, you're going to be starting right here anyway. So it's for those of you that have also been further out after your C-section as well. I personally guide you. It's six plus hours of education, guidance, instructional exercise, releases, and routines. There's a downloadable PDF to keep you organized throughout the program. It's like I said, it's interactive via email with questions and clarifications. And if needed, you can even request a video consult with us um, where we can answer uh, questions for you and help guide you and give you recommendations on what is going to be most appropriate for you. And the cost is less than a, one visit with us in person. So I know that, you know, we need to get you balanced and we need to get you started so you can get back to doing the things that you love, like exercising and getting back to yoga and Pilates and running and, or, or just even simple activities like 
playing with your baby and feeling comfortable and enjoying your child and not worrying about, am, am I ever going to get better? And so I know some of you are like, this sounds amazing. Great. Where do I get started? Well, right down here. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, down in the information box, we have the link to um, everything from this program as well as how to get consults with us. Um, but if you are not watching this on our YouTube channel, then the information is still most likely down below on how you can get started. So I hope this resonated with a lot of you women out there who are trying to do the right thing and recover properly. Um, because I think when we start to get you started right down below, you are going to have phenomenal outcomes and recover appropriately um, to get you functioning again so you can enjoy your child and your family. So thank you again for joining me, and I can't wait to see you on the other side in our program. Take care.